Our theme for this month is God Calls a People and um, today's message, I entitled this God Had Called Us for the Gospel and how did Jesus call us for the Gospel? In the Old Testament, let me tell you about a woman named Rahab. Rahab is a sinful woman. He was a paid woman and during her time, the Israelites under the commander Joshua sent spies into Jericho to scout the area. Gin padalan ni Joshua ang dua ka or tatlo ka mga spies agud mag scout sa area para malutos nila ang ilang lugar. And out of all the thousands of people living in that area, God chooses Rahab, a prostitute. Let me summarize the story of uh, the life of Rahab. God chose Rahab, and second, Rahab responded, yes. That's it. God will use anyone who says uh, yes. And that's our big uh, message for today. Let us find out how the Lord called the early Christians, including us, in the service for the gospel. There are a lot of stories in the New Testament, but let me, let me share to you a story of Apostle Paul on how the Lord called him to be an apostle, to be the proclaimer of the gospel. Let us read in Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 17. Let us first read in uh, verse, uh, first two verse. Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. In Damascus, there was a disciple named... Uh, no. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the highest high priest, verse 2, and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Paul was a Jew, and he was born of descendants of Benjamin. As we read in Philippians chapter 3, verse 5, he writes of himself, Philippians chapter 3, verse 5. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews in regard to the law, a Pharisee. Paul was a Pharisee and he was the son of a Pharisee because his father was a leader of a religious group in Tarsus. And Paul was a dedicated Pharisee. He was an educated man and he was dedicated especially in the, in the law of Moses. Paul think that he is serving God earnestly day and night. And serving God for him means that it is a careful observance of the law. And non-observance of the law violates the Lord. Paul thought that his duty was to keep out those who oppose God and the law. One of those is the Christians because they are, they, pro they are proclaiming the claims of Jesus of Nazareth to be the Messiah. Paul thought that keeping Christianity down and persecuting Christianity is pleasing to God to the point that um, some of Christians died when Paul himself lead the persecution. In verse 3 to 5, uh, Acts, chapter, Acts chapter 9 verse 3 See niya? As he near Damascus in his journey suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him Verse 4 He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? 
Verse 5. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied. You know, the order of, of the, the words of Jesus, there was a there is a question mark out there. And uh, sa, sa ano, sila niya pala nga oh, sila niya balik sa verse 4 ayo Rab, ayo ko Rab, balik sa verse 4 Rab Acts chapter 9 verse 4 Okay, kita tinggal dera, ngami arah dera si question mark sa word ngami. As if that there is, there is an emphasis on the word me, and the word uh, why ngani the question it is an interrogative form. As if the Christ is asking for what reason, for what reason that you are persecuting me? The Lord had done him no injury, but how did how did the uh, the act of Paul hurt Jesus. Paano nga nasakita ng ginawa sa ginobran ni Paul na pag-persecure niya sa mga Christians? Remember, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23, makita natin that Christ and the church is are one. As like the husband and the wife are one. So, when Paul persecute Christians as if that he was persecuting Christ, that was Paul. He was a threat for the Christians during this time. And yet, Christ still used him to be an apostle. And that's how God works. Amo na siya ang ginawa magpili sa tao. Bisa ano ba ang background? He chooses people even with bad backgrounds. Kalain sa background ni Paul, kung nga siya mismo ang nag-lead sa pag-persecure sa mga Christians. In this way, we can imagine how gracious is our Lord because He chose the imperfect people in the service for the gospel. Paul's background is not a problem for Christ. In like manner, our bad history is not a problem for Christ. Our bad background is not a problem for Christ. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 13, Matthew chapter 9 verse 13 Hamba siya But go and learn But go and learn what this means I desire mercy, not sacrifice For I have not come to call the righteous But sinners He is not interested in our background He is not interested On where you came from but he's interested on where you're going. Christ is not interested on what you did before, but Christ is interested in what you are going to do. Christ is not interested on how you failed from the past, but he's interested on how you serve him in the future. He can really use anyone. He can use you, he can use me. And in God's equation, your past doesn't define your future. Amo na siya ka namin ang atong ginoo. Balik kita sa may Acts chapter uh, 9 verse 6. Get around. Sige nga, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Verse 7. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Verse 8. Saul got up from the ground but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. Verse 9. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. As you can see, Paul was not converted on the Damascus Road as he met Jesus himself. But 
Through preaching and obedience of the gospel. Wala kaya siya na save na dito sa pag-met niya kay Jesus Christ sa Damascus. Wala mula siya. Wala pa siya dito na save. Kundi sa time nga na obey siya, pag may nagwari sa iya about some gospel. But as you can see, Paul was three days without sight. He did not eat nor drunk. Maybe he was so broken hearted and guilty for what he did. Grabe, kaya dahil nga pag persecute sa mga Christians, ang iya kayo din ang persecute sa Christ. So, wala siya nagkawang-kaon. Kaya hindi pa rin sila nga kita. Broken hearted siya muro, kaya guilty nila sa nga hindi mo. When a man is broken hearted, it is natural that he will lose his appetite. Kita, kung mag broken hearted kita, magkulong kita sa kwarto, kaya dito lang kita sigihipi, kaya hindi kita magkawang-kaon, ang gaya na, may mga girlfriend ka mo, ang gaya na mo, ang So, ako ina ang retagot pa sa Jenny Christo iso, ani ni Paul, saan tayo nga naging posigil niya si Christ, nagkain niya po, nag-iltay siya, wala siya nagkawang-kawal. But, there, there was a positive response of Paul. Ang iya gini mo yan, dito siya nag-focus sa prayer. He spent much on prayer for three days. Imagine, itago mag-pray ka for just one hour daw, matulugan na kita. But Paul spent pra uh, prayer in almost, and uh, in three days. Nato kita sa verse 10. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias, yes Lord, he answered. Verse 11. The Lord called him, Go to the house of Judas on straight street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. Verse 12. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Verse 13. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. A certain name, Ananias, a disciple, lived at Damascus, is called and chosen by God to share this gospel to Paul. Si Ananias ang ipili sa ginoo. But as you can see, the Ananias reaction, as if that he was not ready for the job that the Lord has given to him. Doon hindi siya ready, doon na nag-look siya. He was fearful because he heard a lot about Paul. Kasi Paul gali ang mga nag-persecute sa mga Christians. So na nag-look siya, siya ang mga mag- Share nila sa gospel sa kay, sa kay Paul. May alam na kita sa mga old friends na kaaway na ito. Kaya isubukan kita na share nila sa gospel. Nahadlock kita gano'n no? So ako na si Ananias na nahadlock siya na mag-share sa gospel kay Paul since na si Paul ang mga nag-persecute sa mga Christians. Grabe ka buday sa part ni Ananias. But, isa na muna niya witness, God has chosen Ananias to preach this gospel to Paul. Ananias didn't have uh, something to do with Paul. Hindi siya gusto nga may, may masyagin ang mismo ang matagdo ko kay Paul. But the Lord wants Ananias to fight for that weakness na nahadlog siya. And si Ananias dapat mag-start na mag-trust sa ginoo sa mga butang, ihatag siya sa ginoo, kaya pinapabuhat siya sa ginoo para manasa na niyaan sa uh, ginarian sa ginoo. Ang witness ni Paul, ani ni Ananias, hindi ko siya hindran sa pag-share sa gospel sa kay Paul. Isa na hatlog siya. His witness was not a hindrance. In like manner, sa ato niya pagkakristuhanon, when the Lord called us to be a part of the church, to be His children, our witnesses seems to be uh, the one who destroy us and stopping us to stand firm for the gospel. Diba lang? Ang muna siya ang nag-apagong sa atol na mag-stand firm kita sa gospel. Ini ang atol ng mga witnesses. We have a lot of witnesses. But God wants us to serve Him and our witnesses cannot stop the plan of God sa atol ng mga kabuhi. Because we have Christ to help us overcome these witnesses that we have because He Himself overcome these witnesses. Basahan na natin sa Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Kung paano sa ginoo, gin-overcome 
ang mga witnesses na nagganyan. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we yet uh, just as we are yet was without sin. So ang ginoo mismo na overcome niya ang ang niya ang weakness. God will use our weakness to proclaim the gospel, to share the gospel sa atong nga lugar. Most of us struggle with our weaknesses because ang muna siya maghimo sa atong to be imperfect. But we believe that God created the church not for the perfect but for the imperfect like us. If we are per perfect, then we don't need church. Church is perfect. We are imperfect. That's why we need the church. We need Christ. But I think that's a verse 15. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go! This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name because the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. Magita natin to Ananias distract ng objection na hindi siya kanil gusto magkato sa kay Paul to share the gospel gin sa patalik ni, ni, ano, ni Jesus. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go! This is this man is my chosen instrument. Such is the only answer we obtain to the suggestion of our doubts and hesitation for, for our duty. Ananias have tried to argue against the command of God. But later, he realized the authority of God over his lives, that he had no excuse for that duty. He had no excuse in sharing the gospel to Paul. Hindi siya pwede nga makapanghindi. Hindi. Since he said, go! Hindi ka naman hindi. In that manner, when we decided to obey the gospel, it is always emphasized that it is our duty to worship the Word, to worship Christ, to study the Word, to, to, to be disciple, and then to share the Word. And no excuses in sharing the Gospel of Christ. As we go through the Bible, there are many Bible characters that uh, they were unfit to serve God. Yet, ended in serving the Lord. Abraham. Abraham was too old. The Christianity will not but he served as a Gino. Jeremiah was too young. Gideon was too fearful. Moses was too uneloquent. Zacchaeus was too greedy. Jonas was too incompetent. That's why he escaped him. And yet God chooses every single one of them and made, made them a servant of Christ in a very personal way. Perhaps we are also giving excuses so that we can escape serving the Lord. As if that we're saying, I'm too bad. Maybe they have to help the ministry because I'm too bad. I'm too sinful. I'm too impatient. I'm too selfish. I'm too shameful. I'm too shameful. I'm too shameful. I'm too shameful. I'm too uneducated. I'm too sick. I'm too sick. Masakit ako, dali na ako sa kilit-kilit. I'm too old. Sigulan na ako, dali na ako, gulang, maano, kukot na ako din. We have no excuse not to serve God. We are called to serve Him and we will do it in every day of our lives. That is the challenge. Ano po na sa ating message today? Today, the Lord is calling us again and like Rahab, we must